Welcome back to my crushing difficulty all collectible walkthrough for Uncharted The Lost Legacy, my friends. So this is chapter number 7 and it's going to be a fairly long chapter, I'm probably going to divide it into two parts. And right at the start of the chapter you want to take that picture. And I'm not going to suggest necessarily that you take care of this section while being stealthy because at one point or the other you will be discovered. But we are going to start by taking care of the snipers over there. They're kind of annoying and on crushing difficulty a single bullet from them will kill you. So we're going to try and be stealthy and get rid of them. And I will be getting rid of a few enemies if everything goes well. While being stealthy let's just take care of that guy. There we go. And we're out of bullets. Those were really the three enemies that I wanted to get. There's also a guy with a rocket launcher but we can't get it from here unless we're discovered. So, at this point, I'm just going to start an all-out war. Might as well get this guy as well, from here. There we go. And let's take care of the guy with the shotgun as well. And then, really, after that guy, I'm not really concerned. Obviously, if that guy hits us up close, I'm crushing your killers as well. There we go. And now let's get ready for a fight, shall we? Because... Sooner or later we are going to be seen. Might as well push this guy down. Come here. There we go. And we're spotted. Well... Time to open up an all-out world. Sorry, you missed it. There we go. This handgun will come in handy. One bullet and it will get rid of all the enemies. Aside from the armor dudes. I don't even know where Nadine is at this point. Probably ran away. Well, that guy's down. There we go. There we go. I love when I get them while they're throwing a grenade, it's always funny. Let's get over here, because the shotgun isn't going to help me a whole lot. And let's get rid of that guy. There we go. As you can see, there's a lockbox there, we're going to get it in a little bit. First, let me just get my rocket launcher again, because we're going to need it in a little bit. And now I think we're good to open the weapon box. Oh, there's Nadine. I don't know how she got there. She's just running around like a maniac. Well, you know, whatever works for her. Some RC4. Make sure you get the lock box. And now let's go over here. Now the guy with the RPG is up there and we can get him with a well placed shot. Of course with this weapon that we're carrying that's going to alert the enemy to our presence but actually what happens is that when we give a few steps far, forward and step into that area there's going to be a bunch of enemies who come out and attack you uh, including two armored soldiers. Uh, one of them is a Gatling gun and another one is a grenade launcher. Might as well get rid of him. You saw nothing. Just fire a rocket over here to make sure. Nope, you're done for. There we go. And where's the other wave of enemies? You might have to move forward a little bit. There we go. Here they come. Oh shit! Who invited him to this party? Oh shit! One. And a little bit of C4. There we go. We need to get rid of that guy with the um, grenade launcher. Grenade launchers are annoying for two, two reasons. Number one, 
they, do, they deliver critical damage and also they throw you around so you'll be left quite vulnerable to enemy fire. Let's go over here now. No point in wasting any more ammunition than what I need. Let's have fun doing this. I love how the enemies just like, oh guys, I think she went behind those stairs, but she kind of vanished. She must be a, ma a magician or something. Okay, let's throw it over here. Come over here. Poor guy, he, saw, he probably thought that if since he survived the C4 explosion that he was saved and then Chloe just smacks his head. Now there's more of them and there's going to be enemies with shotguns, we need to be careful. But we should honestly be okay at this point. We have plenty of places to, to take cover and let me just grab... I guess at this point the grenades will be more useful to me. Because we're going to be getting the grenade launcher anyway, so I'm really not concerned. Oh, and look at this. Funny thing, when Chloe picks it up for the first time and there's enemies around her, she'll say, say hello to my little friend. Uh, she says it in a funnier way. <laughs> but it's quite hilarious. You're done. You never stood a chance. Next shotgun dude, there we go. I have to admit, for all, you know, the fun that it can be to like uh, be stealthy and so on, sometimes nothing beats the good old open. <laughs> there we go. My very large friend. She doesn't say little friend, she says large friend. That's funny. Okay, let's weaken him a little bit. Although, honestly, guys. Let's try and do this with Chloe's very large friend, shall we? Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like I'm not sure never while doing this. Terminator style. Oh, he's dead already? That's it? Oh. Bummer. Are you sure you don't want to throw a few more enemies at me? I was actually starting to enjoy myself. That's a shame. Well, they're gone. That was fun though. That's why sometimes it's fun to just play on Unch Uncharted online, you know, with multiplayer. Sure, you can oh, deal with some annoying people online, but it's kind of funny sometimes to just, you know, be in an all-out combat situation just for fun, obviously. Not that I encourage war or anything like that, Must but... When combat goes a little bit crazy and, you know, Survival mode is fun, you should try that if you haven't, uh, but I actually always quite enjoyed playing Uncharted online uh, in the multiplayer mode. Anyway, we're going to get a treasure now, so if you go over here, let's jump over there. Well, I'll have to tell you, I'm feeling quite nostalgic now, because Uncharted 2 was my first Uncharted game. And man, I used to play that. That was actually one of my first multiplayer games that I ever played, and that was just fun. Could spend hours playing that. I'm guessing it's one of the kings. How many kings did they have in there? Eleven. The young king was the last in their line. Well, his plan worked. Saved his city from the Persians. Okay, let's go up now. There are a lot of collectibles for us to obtain in this chapter. I think that aside from chapter 4, this is the chapter with the biggest amount of collectibles for us to get. There are a lot of treasures. Fortunately, most of them aren't that hard to find. Some of them are well hidden though. Up we go. Just keeps getting more and more spectacular. And in case there was any doubt this was Balor. Lord Shiva. Plus Nambi. And I'm guessing that's Ganesh. It's funny because for me whenever I think of Shiva, I think of Final Fantasy. You know the recurring summon. He's the Hindu god of war. Oh, 
Damn it! They've blown the entrance. That must have been the explosion we heard. Gotta be another way in. <laughs> in here, Nadine. It's great. This grenade launcher is going to come in handy later. Anyway, let's get the treasure over here. There we go. Ah, we totally avoided that explosion. And now time to go for a little dive. It's amazing all these weapons are waterproof. Okay, if you go through here and dive here, you'll find another treasure. Right over here in the corner, make sure you get that. It's a uh, thingy. Looks like a, maybe a vintage inhaler. I mean, I'm sure they had problems too back in the day. I'm sure it's not that. But ah, look there. The oh. queen and her handmaid. It's fun to believe that it is. Maybe these were the royal bards. Some statues of women for a change. Women actually played a big role in Hoysala society, particularly the queens. Not surprised, with the kings and men going off to fight all the time. They were also involved in the fine arts, poetry, music, that sort of thing. Balua was their city, in a way. Okay. After that optional conversation, let's get two more treasures. What on earth is this? What is it? Ancient Kannad script. Looks like stanzas. Could be poetry. This place a library? Seems so. Looks like a drum. It is a drum. They keep all sorts of things in here. You know, I will tell you one thing. It must be very fun to design all of these areas. And just come up with a story. That sounds very fun. But anyway, let's get another treasure. It's right over here in the corner. This one's easy to miss, I think. What do we have here? Incense? Or herbs? And now let's go to Nadine. Fraser, over here. Whoa. It's the tusk. Look at this. It's incredible. It's an altar of some kind. Looks like the king suffered dearly for their people. They weren't just protecting the tusk. Historians believe that it was a symbol of power and dominance, but I reckon they misunderstood. It was a symbol of their people, their culture. It was a symbol of them. What sort of this? Thank me after we get out of this alive. <laughs> Fair point. 
Don't forget Ganesh. Okay, guys, so we're going to get a move on now. It seems that Chloe's father was here. So I kind of feel bad for her. Well, I mean, I'm still curious to know who took out her father. I don't think it would be maybe possible for Asav to be somehow involved. I don't know. Um, but anyway, let's go for a little dive. But how do we get over there? Not that Chloe is necessarily a nice person all the time. She's not. She's not meant to be. Uh, but, you know, I'm sure that finding out that your father who died and that he was in that place before he died and now you're in the same place that can get emotional, I'm sure. I'm not saying this from personal experience, of course. But anyway, now let's go over here to the corner and we're going to take a little dive and swim around. I don't know that you can drown in this segment since it's kind of scripted, but I wouldn't waste too much time here anyway. I don't know about you guys, but I have this bad okay. habit whenever there's this underwater scenes to try and hold my breath at the same time as the characters are doing, just to see if somehow I could manage getting from one place to the other without drowning. It's... I don't know why I do it. But I just do it. Anyway, let's climb up, but make sure you get that treasure. take another picture hi you all right sorry I need to get my head back in the game and I hey Aiden Ross oh my god what the hell <laughs> your head back in the game now oh smarter hmm I would think that this scene would make more sense if Nadine wasn't included in Uncharted 4 as a villain. I don't know, uh, and it's not really that I have a problem with Nadine as a character. I mean, I think they overpowered her in Uncharted 4 and then they toned it down a little bit in this game. But I don't quite understand why, even if she's friends with Chloe, you have to remember Nadine is essentially or she was a warlord. So not say I'm not saying that she couldn't like, you know, change her personality. Nice city you've got here. But if you look at Uncharted 4, would you really think that she's the type of person who would be like, you know, playing around with another person and throwing them in the water and trying to comfort them and so on? She does not seem like that type of person. So I don't know how I feel about these changes and they're trying to make her into a good character. Uh, a likable character I I just don't know that it in my opinion if it doesn't feel a little bit forced of course I'm going to create a poll about this so that you can vote but um, all these scenes with Nadine I think they would make a lot more sense if you know she wasn't a villain in Uncharted 4 and no it's not like she was just working for uh, Rafe and so on she wanted a part of it and she killed a lot of innocent people uh, she admits it herself. She was essentially she she was in charge of you know mercenaries for hire, regardless of the job. So yeah, I don't know. Seems a little bit forced, but anyway, that's going to be it for this segment, my friends. Um, this chapter is far from over, honestly, and there are a lot of treasures for us to collect here. But. That's going to be it, uh, so in the next part we'll conclude chapter 7 and we're getting closer to the end of the game as well. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all later for the next part. Take care. Enjoy your swim, Chloe. Oh no, there's this place. The throne room. 
place to hide a magnificent bejeweled tusk. Let's hope so.